Shalom, and welcome to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul, your Biblical Hebrew podcast. Shalom, and welcome to our Biblical Hebrew podcast. Today I wish to discuss one topic that people keep asking about about it and I would like to explain why I'm so cautious dealing with those topics. People ask many questions about the New Testament and I understand their wish but I also would like to explain why am I so cautious dealing with the New Testament. We don't have exact information about the time the New Testament was written. But it was written in Greek, common Greek, not the classical Greek in which Plato wrote his books, but much more common Greek, which is named Koine. Koine. This language was very common since the time of Alexander the Great until the 6th century after Christ, like 900 or 1000 years. This language, Hellenistic, was common. It's like, in a way, the language of the, if we can equivalent it, it's like the English which is spoken in the internet. It's not Shakespeare English, but it's a language that many people can understand and relate to each other. So it's a vast, common language. The New Testament was written in this language. When a person who comes from Hebrew background and he reads the New Testament in Hebrew because there is a chance that from Hellenistic, from Koine, from common Greek, it was translated back to Hebrew. So when a person comes from reading the Biblical Hebrew and he reads the New Testament in Hebrew, which probably was translated from common Greek, the language of the market, the language that everybody understands. There is a great breaking of the heart. Nietzsche, the German philosopher, once said, without even having a clue in Hebrew or in Biblical Hebrew, he said that when he reads the New Testament, he feels it's a very poor language. And please take those words very cautiously as well. The time of Jesus I would say even before, the times of Alexander the Great, three centuries before Jesus, the spirit in the world was sinking into the flesh. People, in a way, something in the world, people recognition and awareness of the inner meaning of the word sank like a like a ship in a very deep waters and since people forget their relation to the root their relation to the inner meaning of the word the language in a way expresses this forgetfulness so when 
And this is because people ask so many questions about the New Testament. And I read the New Testament in Hebrew and all the bells are ringing in my head. Why is the language of the New Testament is the language of the market? And I start investigating it and researchers say that the New Testament, even the translation, the first translation of the Bible into Greek was translated into common Greek, not classical Greek, but common Greek. This is why the sages of Israel wept for 70 days when they did it. The first translation of the Bible to Greek, common Greek, is named Volgata, Volgata. So I wish you to see in a way the junction of which we are standing when we come and we want to approach the New Testament and rescue, and this is the word, rescue the words and the names from the street language. It's a lot of work because you have to read and to always detect like a good detective what is real and what is a batch. But I hope you can understand that it's not that trivial. It's not that trivial. In one of our previous podcasts, we were showing the footprints of God in history, how the human spirit degraded after building the temple in Jerusalem. This is not a religious description. This is what happened to the human spirit. And when people read already the New Testament only from this point, from Jesus' time and on, it's the language of the market, the common Greek of buying and selling. And they sold Jesus and Jews sell the brothers. In Second World War, they were giving the German authorities the lists of the names of their communities, the addresses, how the Germans could find six million people without the aid of and cooperation of people. This is a 2,000 years of darkness since Jesus' times until 1917, the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was a living word saying, people, Hebrew, you can come to the land. People who heard this word came on time to the land, and those who did not listen went somewhere else. Part left to America, part to South America, and part continue to live through a new life. So I hope that you can follow this complexity. What Weiner did in his books, he was rescuing the names of people and the names of places. And slowly, I believe we shall do this too, but it's a very, very delicate work. It's not that I don't want to do it, but it's very, very delicate. So I hope you can see in a way how deep it is and how vast and broad it is. It's not little. And I hope you can understand. Wishing you a beautiful day and wonderful year. Thank you for listening to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to hear more about a certain topic, just write us an email to hebrew at learnoutlife.com. We are always happy to hear from you. For more episodes, videos, and articles like this, please visit our website at hebrew.learnoutlive.com. We also would like to invite you to join our live classes. 
Just search for Online College of Biblical Hebrew on Facebook and start learning now with students from all over the world. Kol Tuv and Shalom.